Hi, it's Rich Tarani with TMC. We're in San Jose this week, and on our program is uh, David Isles. He's a director of product management systems uh, at IBM, and uh, David, we're thrilled to have you here. I was hoping we could start out by talking about uh, what what part of IBM you work in and what's happening there. Great, thanks for uh, for having me on. Uh, I work for the system networking group at IBM, and we make the Ethernet switches uh, for IBM. Uh, so we make data center Ethernet switches, uh, you know, wiring closet or WAN switches, uh, really focused on uh, the edge of the network connecting to servers and storage devices. So um, one of the new things that we're doing is around uh, virtualization. So we've had a lot of innovations in the past uh, with our, our VM-ready technology, um, providing some uh, visibility of the virtual machines inside of the servers to network admins. One of the new things that we've done is we have taken the, the same software, the same operating system that's in our um, top of rack switches and our embedded switches, and we've made uh, an embedded um, virtual switch, a distributed virtual switch. Um, it's called the DVS uh, 5000V. So basically, it's a, you can think of it as like a 4000 port switch that is inside of uh, your VMware servers. So it's uh, distributed across maybe hundreds of VMware servers and managed like a, a regular physical switch. So it has all of the controls that a network admin is used to having in terms of the CLI, in terms of um, uh, security parameters, uh, things like uh, quality of service and security. So um, where this is useful is, is providing that visibility of where your virtual machines are, giving um, control and monitoring capabilities. And so the way it works is this whole big distributed V switch is um, controlled from really the same place that you control the virtual machines. Is a, on the same machine that does your, your vCenter uh, from VMware, you usually will run this uh, controller of uh, this distributed vSwitch. Great, now what about Pure Systems? What's happening with, with that? Uh... So Pure Systems, uh, IBM has recently announced this, uh, uh, this large integrated system. It's kind of a next generation of uh, integrated uh, servers, storage, and networking. You know, we spent uh, $2 billion developing this uh, new um, solution that has all these things kind of uh, built in together. And so we make the integrated Ethernet switches that are kind of the glue that holds the, the network, the, the servers and the storage together. And by having the networking integrated in this uh, solution, it improves the latency when servers are talking to servers. Uh, it improves uh, when virtual machines are moving from server to server. Uh, and it provides better um, control management. So one of the big things about Pure Systems is workload provisioning. Um, you know, they've got this thing that's uh, they call the Pure Application System, and it's it's kind of a, a, a private cloud in a box. It's uh, you know, uh, it's got licenses and the same tools that you would use to provision workloads to uh, Azure or Amazon services. Um, you could do now bring that in house, and all of the um, uh, licensing and things of that nature are built into the system. But where we come into play is the networking. So we're the ones that make the integrated 10 gig switches uh, with 40 gig uplinks or one gig switches um, into that uh, pure systems solution. It seems uh, like servers and uh, routing uh, switches, all of that's converging, right? Just faster and faster. All the vendors seem to be getting into that. It is. Um, in fact, it's responding to customer demand. The customers want a single pane of glass to manage the, the servers, the storage, and the networking. Um, gone are the days where they say, you know, I guess they have to in some cases of say, all right, I have a new service I want to bring online. Well, we'll put in a work request and have someone provision that network. And we'll have someone else provision the, the, the storage. Because the storage used to be, um, uh, you know, in the building next door. Now the storage is right in with the servers, connected with uh, very high speed networking. Now, uh, what about software defined networking? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so software defined networks is, uh, is a, a new and emerging uh, area. Uh, IBM's been an innovator in that. We, uh, we, were the first, we offered the first 10 gigabit Ethernet switch um, that supported OpenFlow. So OpenFlow is something that uh, is kind of that mechanism that, that takes the control off of the individual um, switches and routers and, and moves it to a centralized controller. And so OpenFlow is something that we're investing in and uh, we've already got products that work with most of the uh, uh, controllers in the industry. What's new for us is, well, um, so part of it is um, we're doing some overlay technology. So we're building on that um, software-defined network that says, hey, it's not just physical machines that we're programming. It's also um, virtual machines, virtual machine, uh, virtual switches. 
so that you can take a, a physical infrastructure, not change the um, uh, layer two and layer three rules, and layer on top of it a new um, overlay uh, virtual network. And so you can break free from this. Uh, there's some rules about virtual machines if you want to move from uh, one rack in a data center to another rack in the data center. If you, you want to cross layer three boundaries, you can't do it live, right? The VM has to be shut down and brought up someplace else. With this overlay technology, you can um, move things uh, in a live manner um, and have a bunch of kind of uh, virtual, virtual lands, uh, thousands of them. And this provides uh, some, some better uh, isolation if you've got multi-tenancy, especially in cloud environments where you want to control, um, you have multiple customers and you've got service level agreements and you need to protect these customers from each other and um, still provide security quality service levels um, regardless of the physical infrastructure. So it's kind of like networking multi-tenancy. It, it's, uh, it, it's beyond that. It gives you um, finite control. So if today if you want firewall services, they've got to be one part of the network. Or if you've got VPN services or uh, intrusion detection, uh, any kind of security services, they kind of have to be up at the applic uh, application layer of the network. With um, OpenFlow or really software-defined networks, it gives um, a lot more control into how traffic is steered. It gives you an end-to-end -end, uh, visibility of the network. So instead of relying on um, you know, agreed-upon protocols like BGP or OSPF or Spanning Tree, now you are controlling where these flows go. And um, that's really kind of the next generation of networking. So what's next? So next is some of the stuff that I was talking about with uh, advancing software-defined networks beyond just OpenFlow. Um, so we talked a little bit about this uh, distributed vSwitch um, that we've, um, uh, uh, we've deployed today. It's uh, available today. But that's going to be a platform in the future for some of this um, software-defined network. We also have a couple of new switches that we've uh, announced. Um, the 40G, right? That's right. We've got a 40 gigabit Ethernet um, uh, switch, our rack switch 8316. It's got 16 ports of 40 gig, and it's a data center switch, so it's got all the airflow that matches servers. And we've also got a, a new 10G base T switch, so it's um, got 48 ports of 10G base T. It's our rack switch 8264-T. And while it's interesting in its own, um, it kind of couples with um, IBM has new servers that are 10G based T, and we've also got some new uh, storage that's 10G based T. So we have a whole solution, much like the peer systems, where we're putting out storage and networking and servers that are all integrated together uh, with this new 10G based T offering. We'll be able to offer that uh, for that new medium as well. Now, for uh, decision makers who are looking to purchase uh, switches, routers from uh, one of the leading vendors in the market, why IBM as opposed to some of the other vendors? Well, so uh, a number of things. I think, first off, now we make our own, uh, so we still partner with, with um, uh, a lot of different networking vendors. Um, but IBM, having networking in, inside, we're able to bring more value to customers. We're able to integrate um, the management of those three components, the servers, the storage, and the networking. We're also able to um, take new ideas that we have. Um, the way IBM works is we, we, we work in the labs and we create new ideas. And, and then we bring it in standards. Right. And in the past, um, we had to rely on partners to bring these standards to market. And now, with integrated, with having our own network, we can um, bring these high value pieces to market quicker. Things like we've got this new standard um, for virtual machine networking that um, this new DVS 5000V um, supports. It's called 802.1 QBG. It's Ethernet Virtual Bridging. It's a there's a lot of value there in in having a standardized way of controlling. Uh, the policies around virtual machines. And uh, IBM now has that end-to-end. Um, -end. Excellent. Thanks for being here today. Hey, thanks a lot.